Okay, good evening everybody. I hope we're after all these technical problems that finally I've got everything sorted and everything's working okay. I just did a test a couple of minutes ago and everything seemed to be okay, but well, let's <laughs> let's see, shall we? Let's see if it all, all works. Okay, um, as everybody's filing in and taking a seat, um, if you could sign into the chat, uh, that would be really good. You can ask me questions there and give me any feedback or or, or anything at all. So, uh, if you can log in to the chat, um, and as you're doing that, I will I will say hello to you. Uh, I'm just checking the tech as we're going through this, making sure that everything is working okay. Okay, well I can see me, uh, and there you go. I can I can hear me as well. So I think I think we are live. I think everything's all going okay. So uh, let's let's go with this. Okay, so um, as we're all sitting down and getting comfortable, um, a few little questions just to get things moving along quite nicely. Uh, first question, how, do you need to clean data often? And if you do, how often? How often do you clean your data? So... I'm just I'm just watching the stream at the moment, and it seems uh, it seems to be going on and off. If somebody could could um, let me know if you can hear me and see me okay, please. The uh, the technology looks to be jumping up and down for for the feed that I've got, which doesn't look good at all. Okay. Okay, so apparently it's choppy. Right, okay, if it's choppy, <laughs> Van, you see me, I Van, yes. Okay, about once, about once every two months, you need to, oh, so somebody, you can hear me, haha, <laughs> great. Uh, um, right, hi Zishan. Uh, right, if you can, if you can let me know if, if technically everything's working okay. Yes, can see and hear in the southern US. Oh, I hope it's warmer there than it is here. It's not been very nice for the last few days. It's been overcast and uh, cold and rainy. I went out yesterday. I got I got a meeting to go to and I got my suit on, my suit and tie. And I look great. Uh, and every time I went outside, they just the rain just went whoosh, and I got absolutely soaked four times in a row. Ah, uh, it wasn't a good day. Anyway, I hope <laughs> hope it's nicer weather in the southern US. Um, okay, so question, do you need to clean data often and how often do you need to clean it? That's the first question. Second question, how long does it take to clean your data? Does it take uh, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months? I hope it doesn't take you months, it shouldn't take months. So, uh, okay, first question, do you need to clean data often? Second question, how long does it take to clean your data? If you can type it into the... Um, into the chat, uh, I'll answer your questions I, as soon as they come in. Uh, just so that you know, there's about a 10 second delay between me speaking and things uh, coming out into the into the video. So that there is a there is a little bit of a lag here. So I, I can, if I ask a question, it's, it's it's 10 seconds before you hear it, and then another few seconds before you think about it and type it in. So there can be a bit of a lag at times. Okay, uh, and I'll ask another question: Which apps? Functions or formulae are more most useful to you when you're doing your data cleaning. It doesn't necessarily have to be Excel. It could be any any other tool that you use, any other application. But what is most useful to you uh, when you're doing your data cleaning? Okay, so okay not very not very good so generally excel as opposed to an r script you know what it, it's absolutely okay to use excel uh, when whenever we're starting out with data we pretty much everybody starts with their excel and most people never transition away from it it's it's a very very powerful tool it has its limitations and people only start to move away from it once they they, they bump up against those limitations and they realize mm, the things I need to do 
I need more and then they start to move away but there's nothing wrong with Excel uh, I still use it occasionally uh, I mostly don't I use other things but um, yeah I, I still use use Excel from from time to time uh, Joyce uses SPSS that's not the best tool to be to be cleaning data with um, it's mostly about uh, uh, doing statistics and uh, Tableau you use Tableau uh, okay again that's not that's not great for data cleaning it's for visualizing uh, patterns in data um, but yes I, I guess you can you can do data cleaning in, in those uh, I, I, I wouldn't I, I, I must confess that um, in Minitab there are some tools to, in, uh, in Minitab that's quite useful um, so whenever I, I used to do some data cleaning I used to do some in Excel and I transfer it into a mini tab use the tools in there then get it back out again back into Excel because it, some of the tools were, were, were very good so I, I, I can understand why you would use uh, such as SPSS or Tableau they might have some tools in there that, uh, that are really useful to you Okay, so uh, let's 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 move on. Um, a very quick introduction. If you if you don't know if you don't know me, if you haven't seen me before, I'm, I'm sure some of you will have done. But um, uh, I'm Lee Baker. Um, I'm the CEO of Chi Squared Innovations, and I've I, it, we've just we've just turned five. The company is now five years old. Five years yesterday. Uh, um, but my experience personally with data is uh, is almost 20 years long. Um, I worked on the Visible Human Project. I worked on the Human Genome Project. Uh, I worked on the European Soils Database as well. And um, before I set up my, my, my company, uh, seven years before that, I was a, a medical statistician. So I've, I've worked with data uh, actually quite a lot over the past 20 years. Um, uh, these days, uh, I'm I'm known as a as a data scientist, although it's a very new um, job title. Uh, it didn't exist uh, just a few years ago. Okay, John says I've always just used Excel, though I will sometimes clean my geographic attributes with ArcGIS and Desktop. ArcGIS Desktop. Yeah. Uh, hi, John. It's uh, it's it's good to have you here. I remember our conversations from before. If you're the same John that I think you are, uh, from uh, from GIS work. Okay, it's great to have you here. Okay, so this, this webinar today is all about how to organize your data to fast track your data cleaning. Uh, Laura says image is a bit choppy, but you can hear. Okay, um, okay, quick question before we move on. Um, does anybody want me to restart the feed? Is it bad enough that we need to restart the feed? I, 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 can, I can do that, that's not a problem. Just let me know if you need me to restart the feed and I can do that and hopefully it'll come out stronger uh, the second time I do it. Okay, for the, for the moment until somebody uh, lets me know what they want me to do. Um, yes, the, this webinar is about how to organize your data to fast track your data cleaning. And what we're gonna go through today is, is how to arrange your worksheet. You are John, yes. Yeah, you are the John that I thought you were. Hi, hi John. Um, so we're going to um, we're going to go through arranging your worksheet to get it right first time. If you were here for last week's webinar, that's what we did last week. But I'm going to go through it very quickly today. Just the important points. I'm not going to labour the, the the point, but just the the most important points of 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 how to get your worksheet arranged so that you can work with it in Excel and upload it to most statistics programs, and it should work straight out of the box because you've got the the format of your data correct. We're also going to talk about using multiple worksheets in your workbook so that you can organize your data cleaning processes. Uh, and we're going to also learn how to disaster proof your data cleaning by version controlling it. Uh, so that, that's what we're going to go through here. Okay, right. To get the best out of this workshop, if you could uh, turn your phones off, close your browser tabs, close the door, uh, have a big cup of coffee ready and waiting uh, and take notes okay uh, so I just restarted uh, let's see how this works let's do a, a, a quick sound check and make sure everything's okay uh, if everybody can um, confirm that you can see me okay you can hear me okay let's just get through this it might take a, it might take a minute uh, just to make sure that everything's okay and then we'll continue with the the, the webinar 
Okay, I'm just going to quickly check that I can see and hear myself. I can see myself. Uh, that's not choppy. It seems to be okay. Okay, I'm just going to quickly check. And it seems to... Yes, I can hear myself now, so I'm going to turn the sound off there. Okay. So, yes. So, can I hear anything? I can. It's better. Joyce says it's better now. John says it's much better. Marie says yes, much better. Great. I'm really pleased. Oh, the joys of technology. Yes, you're not pulling funny faces. Do you want me to pull funny faces? <laughs> I can do that. We've got 45 minutes left. I can just sit here and pull funny faces if that's what you want me to do. Okay, sorry, clinical issues. I'll leave it open and come back. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for letting me know. Uh, hopefully, you can get back soon. Okay. Oh, the joys of technology. Right, okay. So, now that we, uh, we've established that everything seems to be running okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I was just starting to, to give you a little bit of information uh, about me, about the um, what, um, what my background is with data so that you understand um, where I'm coming from with all of this. Okay, so, as, as I said, I've worked for almost 20 years with data, I'm these days called a data scientist. I've worked on the Visible Human Project, Human Genome Project, European Source Database, and as a medical statistician. And um, throughout my time as um, as doing all these things as an analyst, I've I've been given lots and lots of different data sets by lots of people. My my previous job as a as a um, a, a consulting statistician in a a, a clinical environment. Um, I didn't have my own data. Everybody else had the data and they'd bring it to me to do their analyses. So, uh, every time I got one of these data sets, it needed to be cleaned and prepared before I could start doing anything. And it would take me a couple of weeks just to clean the data set before I could start analysing it. And this was a big problem because I was typically working on about a dozen different projects at the same time. And so I got lots of different bosses. I'd not only got my own boss, who was always putting me under pressure to get things done, but all of these other people that brought me their data sets, they, nobody ever came to me and gave me a data set and said, oh, I've got, I've got lots of time. You, I've got a six month deadline on this. It's always, we're right on the deadline now. I need it done pretty much now. So we're constantly under pressure to try and turn these data sets around. And, and two weeks cleaning per data set was just ridiculous. And it just slowed everything down so much. So I needed to learn how to use Excel much more effectively and efficiently to be able to uh, turn it around, clean these data sets, prepare them, um, pre-process them so that I could get onto the analyses. So that in, a, in just in a couple of days, I could get back to them and say, I, I haven't finished the analyses, but I've, I've done some. And, and here's, the, here's the first set of, set of results. And I can keep things ticking over. You can't really keep them ticking over with data cleaning. Um, so I had to use, uh, learn to use Excel's functions and formulae and try and find out a way of really, really making it very quick. Uh, I, I essentially, I got this data cleaning problem down from uh, a couple of weeks down to a couple of hours. And it didn't matter how, how large the data set was, I could turn it around in a couple of hours with the, the, the cleaning and the pre-processing. Because I got my processors so, so, so clean, so crisp, and I knew exactly what I was doing. I got myself organized and everything suddenly went really smoothly. And, and, and this, is, this is what I'm wanting to teach you. And uh, what we're gonna do now is, uh, and we're gonna go through the very first steps of this process of understanding how to, how to keep everything flowing along and, uh, and, and really fast tracking your data cleaning so that you can get onto the analyses, you know, the really important stuff that you really need to do. Okay, uh, by the way, if anybody wants to uh, ask any questions, please feel free to, um, to, to drop your questions into the chat screen and I will, I will I'll, I'll keep stopping and checking and I'll, I'll answer as we're going along. Uh, so, right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and into a uh, PowerPoint. So hopefully this works okay. Right, okay, here we are. So we're, I'm gonna talk about first about your data worksheet, about how to get this into the into the right kind of shape so that you're, you're ready to start working with it. Uh, we're using Excel's uh, functions and 
formulae and also to be able to upload it to a statistical program like SPSS or Minitab or whatever and you can start working with it. Uh, and there are some um, some certain features about about a data set which pretty much all statistics programs want it to be in a, a certain format and so so th this is the format a again as I said I'm, I'm going to go through this actually quite quickly because this was last week's topic so each column should be a single variable and each variable should contain one type of information don't mix information within a single variable okay the first column, column A, should be a unique ID column. This is really important because you're going you're gonna to want to sort your data by different columns. You want to get back to the original uh, order that you, that you want it to be in. So always have a unique ID in column A. Don't have any blank columns. Blank columns don't do anything for you at all. If you try to, uh, if you try to do f things like filters, uh, and you, you select a per particular part of data and there's a there's a blank column and then some more some more data in columns further to the right of that they won't be included so uh, you, you, you've got a bit of a problem there so we, we must make sure that we don't have any blank columns right each row should be a single sample row one should be your variable name that's row one and only row one so make sure that your name, the variable name, does not break across multiple rows, across rows two, three, and four. Row one is reserved for your uh, for your variable names, and all other rows are your data. You should also make sure that there are no blank rows. If you've got blank rows, that can cause you problems in Excel. It can also cause you problems in statistics programs uh, because they, they they are not programmed to deal with blank rows. Every cell should be populated right uh, I know most people don't do this but uh, an empty cell tells you nothing so when you're entering your data and you have uh, no data for a particular cell don't just leave it empty because you don't know why it's empty you must make sure that you put something in there uh, some kind of a code to tell you why it's empty you could put in A for no data recorded B waiting for lab C for the data is incorrect or whatever then you know exactly why your data uh, why there's no data in that particular cell uh, and, and this can really um, save you a lot of time when you're doing your data cleaning because you you, you know exactly why there's no data in that in that cell and you're not going around uh, chasing your tail multiply going through the same process time and time again okay you should also make sure that you are consistent about data entry uh, it, typing errors are it's, it's bad enough trying to clean all of those out but if you're not consistent about your data entry that can give you big problems as well and um, the uh, the example I've given here is um, of an entry of either positive or negative and there are lots of different ways of writing in the word positive even without entry errors uh, you can write it in full positive or pause or with a capital P or a lowercase p or a, or a symbol or whatever. And each of these is going to give you a problem. You're going to have to clean them all up before you, go, before you, you can do any analysis. So be consistent about your data entry and make sure that you, um, you, you make sure that everybody understands what your uh, data entry standards are so you can continue to be consistent. Uh, finally, I think it's finally. I think it's the final slide on this. Don't guess or approximate. You enter data as accurately as you can, as accurately as it is recorded uh, on paper or wherever it is that you record recorded. Don't round up or round down or do anything else in your head. You've got tools within Excel that can do that for you. So you put it in as accurately as you can, then you can use Excel's tools. If you don't do that, you're likely to likely uh, enter errors or bias into your data. Okay, so that was a quick whistle-stop tour of um, the important points about a worksheet. I'm sorry if that was very, very quick, but as I said, that was last week's topic, and we're just, I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page here when we're talking about um, the data and working within the workbook. If anybody's got any questions drop them into the chat screen still no questions at the moment that's okay if you haven't got any that's all right but let's let's see okay so where are we 
So, okay, so I'm going to go to a, an Excel demo now. Um, so we're going to talk about the workbook and, and how to work with multiple worksheets. So let's see. So let's see if this all works. Oh, look at that. I think it did. Okay, so, so what we've got here is uh, a sample of data. It's um, obviously a very, very tiny data set, but um, you can imagine that it's a lot bigger. Um, we don't want to be cleaning data uh, by eye. We've got to start doing it by automated means. And, uh, and this data set, it's got uh, some of those features of, of what a good data set is. And actually, this is a, this is a good start. It's, it's not perfect. It's got some, some things that we need to deal with. Uh, but let's see where we go. So what, what you've done is you've gone out and you've collected data, uh, maybe in, in paper form. You've then transcribed it into Excel. You've called it, you called it raw data because it's, it's a copy of your paper-based forms. And once you've done that, you then don't want to touch this. This is a copy of your uh, paper-based forms and you don't want to touch it anymore. You want to leave it as a, a verbatim copy, okay? So what you want to do is uh, you want to make a copy of that and then call it cleaning in progress or something like that so that you can start to do your, your cleaning on it on a copy of the data set, not the original data set, okay? And so what we do is we go, we click, and we go in progress. Okay, so what, what I've done in this sheet is I've started to do some data cleaning. Now, I've done it manually. I've done it by eye so that we can see the, the steps of, of what I've done. But I, I obviously wouldn't normally do it manually. I'd do it by automated means using functions and formulae. But what I've done is I've labeled each error that I've found. And I've labeled them with different labels according to the different type of error that we've got. Now, of course, when people normally start out with a, a data set and they start doing cleaning, when they're not very um, experienced with this, what they do is they, uh, they start looking down the data set by eye and say, oh, I found an error there, I'll clean that. And then you start looking, oh, I found another error here, I'll clean that up. And then you start, you, you realize that, that's terribly inefficient. I don't want to do it like that. I'll do it column by column. Okay. So you start scrolling down a single column, column A or column B or whatever it is, uh, until, you, until you find, again, by eye, a particular error. Once you've found that error, you then clean it up. And then you scroll some more until you find another error. This is the worst way you can clean data. If you've got a data set of a few dozen variables and uh, a few thousand or tens of thousands of rows you're going to go home at the end of the day with a stinking headache uh, the pain behind your eyes is going to be immense and you really don't want to do that it's it's not nice at all so we we should not be looking at our data by eye to try to spot errors we've got to we've got to do it we've got to do it in in a better way than this so what we need to do is we need to classify each of our types of error and we deal with each type of error in turn. So um, extra spaces at the beginning or at the end or in between text. All these spaces, these are a particular type of error. Case controlling your data is a type of error. Spelling errors is a different type of error. So all these different types, we have to deal with each one of these separately. So we don't actually deal with data, we deal with types of error, okay? So what I've done here is, um, just for simplicity's sake, I've, I've categorized each of these different types of error. So I've, I've put an A here for specific types of error that I found, some Bs, some Cs, and a D. And just to make it easy to see, I've, um, I, I, I've, I've put this, the cells in particular colors so that we can see what, we, what we're doing. So if I click back and forth between my raw data and my in progress, you can see how we start from a raw data set and it's, it's really not easy to see to spot the problems that we might have in there. Even with such a small data set, you've got to look quite closely to try to, to, try to see any errors. But once we've actually categorized those, those errors, 
and, and put some kind of code and even a color on, it suddenly becomes really easy to spot where the problems are that we can, we can deal with them. And then once we've done that, we can deal with each type of error in turn. Again, I've I've done this manually just uh, just so that we can we can we can see how how we're doing all of this. But I, I wouldn't normally do it manually. I'd do it uh, by automated means, functions and formulae. But I I deal with uh, all the A's, all the errors uh, categorized with an A, the same type of error. I deal with them throughout the entire data set, and then I deal with B's, all the B's, and then all the C's, and then all the D's. And once I've done that, I've then got a data set which is clean. Now what I've done here is I've I've coded a, an A I think yeah I have okay I've coded an A as um, it's an empty cell uh, we have no data for, for that particular uh, for that particular code and I've checked back at the original source and we still have no data for it and we're just going to have to accept that we have no data for these particular cells so we're not going to analyze those cells we can still analyze all the rest of the cells and all the rest of the columns but not those cells uh, and then so once I've done that this is my stored data when we've done that we're ready to start analyzing the data but only after we've cleaned out the rest of these codes. So then I make another copy of the data, and here we are, data for analysis. That's a, a copy of that with all the codes then removed. And so we've got a data set that actually looks very similar to the raw data that we had. But the difference is that in here, we've got height and weight, and between these two, they calculate BMI, body mass index. So if we've got a missing value here, the BMI has been calculated as a zero. But it's not actually a zero. It's, that's an error. Uh, so this one, we've got a height and we have no weight. So we have, again, a zero BMI. So that's an error. And we've got another one here. So we have to clean those out. Okay. Uh, and we have a negative value here for age well nobody has a negative age so again that's something that we have to clear out so that there, there are a number of errors within these data that we have we've taken through a process to get to our data for analysis we've checked up uh, this value here we didn't get anything so we've so that's now empty and there's the other two further down here we've checked those values we've now got them we've put them in we've made sure that the calculation is correct and we have more data we've done our due diligence okay so the one of the really important points of, of what I'm, I'm trying to get over to you here is uh, the fact that when we have a data sheet a worksheet with all our data on and this is before we've started to do any work on it if you were to start cleaning that data in situ and you made a mistake that mistake could be catastrophic if you did a, um, a find and replace throughout your data set and it did something that you didn't expect it to do or it did something that you actually didn't realize it had done you did a find and replace and it replaced it replaced in partial cells as opposed to in the whole cell uh, you could have just introduced a whole load of errors all across your data set and you may be aware of them and you may not be aware of them but they're still there and you might not it might not be very easy to undo it you might actually have to scrap your entire data set and if somebody's spent a couple of weeks transcribing that from your paper based forms into Excel and you haven't made a backup copy and you've just messed it all up somebody's gonna be pretty unhappy with you so we don't want to do that so you never clean your data in the original uh, data worksheet that you have okay uh, we transcribe it from paper into Excel once you've got that you leave it alone you make a copy you've now got a backup copy you can work on one of your copies and know that if you make a mistake there you, you, you've got a, a previous version that you can go to so you might lose a little bit of work if you make a mistake but it's not it's not uh, it's not a catastrophe you've just disaster proofed your data 
Okay, so what we do, what we've done here is I'm going to flick between these these four different sheets, and you can have as many di different sheets as you like to um, to put some kind of a chronological flow into your data. We start with raw data, uh, we make a copy, we categorize all the different types of uh, of error, so it's it's easy to, to try to work with each individual type of error then once you've done that you can make a copy once you've made a copy you can then clean that up once you've got your clean data you then say okay that's it that's where we've got to make a copy of that and then clean out all your codes you've now got your data for analysis if you find an error in a later worksheet you can work backwards and find out how and when that data how and why that data, that error, got into your data in the first place. Then you're going to make your, your data cleaning processes better. You've just learned something about yourself and about your processes. Okay, so, so going through and making multiple worksheets like that at different stages of your uh, preparation, your data cleaning, your preparation, your pre-processing, it, uh, it, it, it disaster proofs your data and it makes sure that you've, you've got a chronological flow and you can always roll back if you need to. Um, okay, another another thing to, be, to note is, is here we have a codes sheet. So as I said, um, we used codes to tell us why we don't have data for a particular cell. Sorry, I was just checking to see if anybody got any questions as we moved from uh, from one section into a, into another. There's no more questions. If you've got any questions, ask away. I'll answer them straight away. Okay. Um, so here we we have a, a codes sheet. So we we've whenever we've put a code into our data to tell us why there's no uh, entry for that particular cell, we need to know why that is. Otherwise, you're going to keep checking it time and time again. So this is how I do my, my codes. I, I set up a code sheet. I get all of my variables. I list them uh, in column A. And uh, along the top in the first, first row, I put the, the various codes that I've used. So A, B, C, and D. Uh, and so uh, I've used A for not recorded, B for waiting for lab, C meaning the data is incorrect, and D means I, I, I really need to go back and check the original source uh, to make sure that we, I've got the, the, the correct data. So um, for each cell, if you've got the data, that's great. If you don't have the data, you've put in a code to tell you why you don't have uh, the data for that, for that cell. And it stops you from going back and, and, and keep going and checking the same sheets time and time again, which is a waste of time. I've also put in here uh, the measurement units that, uh, that each of these variables is measured in. Uh, and, and that's really important. Uh, remember I said uh, I use height and weight to calculate the BMI, well, uh, height and weight need to be in the in the just the the, the right uh, units to be able to uh, calculate the BMI. If they're not, you, you're going to need to do a transformation. You need to know what the units are, so so get them, so write them in there. Um, I've also uh, put in here what the data type is, quantitative or qualitative, and what the class of data is. So uh, that'd be ratio, interval, uh, ordinal, or nominal. Okay, so it's four different data classes. I'm not going to go into that here. That's a, a lesson for another day. But I've put an, a lot of information about, about my data so that I don't have to remember it. And this is really important. I've also got a notes sheet. So, excuse me one second. This is, of course, very thirsty work. So in here, I've, I've got various, various things that I've done to do with my data. I might have had to make a, um, an ethics application. Um, it's okay. When did I make it? Uh, when was it approved? Was it approved? Did I have to go back? Um, when, I, when did I collect the data? Who collected it? When was it entered into the form? Who entered it into the form? Who's got access to this data set? What is my primary hypothesis? Actually, I'm going to move backwards to uh, to another sheet called study, ne study notes. Uh, in here, I've put the primary hypothesis uh, to assess if the BMI of patients with disease X is different to that of disease Y. Um, I might have some secondary hypotheses. Um, 
I might want I, I've got a, a name for my for my study, a start date, an end date, principal investigator, supervisor. All these things are actually really important. It tells you a lot about your study. It's not just that you have some data. Data is associated with uh, real life. It's an extraction from real life. And these real, this real life has interactions. It has rules. So you have to write all these rules and all these interactions into your study. You, they're not captured with just your data. So you have to write them into other sheets. And this is, you might think this is not, not very important, but what if you collect all your data and you start doing some work on it and you realize, mm, I'm not sure how to analyze, analyze this data. I need to take this to a statistician. So you go to a statistician and you give him a copy of your data set and he goes, what? What's this all about? What's the data? I don't understand the data. You then might have several hours worth of explanations to give him about, about what you've done, why you've done it, how you've done it, how you've collected your data, how accurately you've collected your data, what calculations you've done, uh, how much you've rounded by, how many decimal places. There's so many things that you will do with your data, so many decisions that you've made, so many uh, scientific things that you've done that make a difference in how you've collected your data. Your statistician will need to know all this information. So write it down, get it in this sheet, make sure that everything, every decision that you've ever made is right in there. Okay, so codes, so that's study notes, codes, notes. I've got a sheet here called descriptive stats. I, I'm not gonna uh, go too far on, on this one. Just to, I, want, I just wanted to give you a, a, a quick view of, of what your data looks like without looking at your data. Okay, so what I do as a, as a minimum, I work out various measures to do with the data to tell me what's in there and what's not in there. So in my raw data sheet, I've, I've worked out how many empty cells we have, uh, how many uh, full cells we have, uh, count. Uh, I, I've worked out the minimum, mean, maximum, how many zeros we've got in cells, how many negative numbers we've got how many A's, B's, C's and D's, because these are, of course, our codes that we've used. So these are, for me, these are the, the minimum things that we need to work out for each of our uh, variables so that we, we get an understanding of, of what data that we've got without scrolling through uh, lots and lots of screens of, of your data. So, uh, so very, very quickly here, I, I can see straight away that looking at, at, the, at the, the empties, we've got some empty cells. Well, that might be a problem and it might not be. That all depends on you and your data. And also depends on your boss. But, but here, this is, uh, we've got in age, we've got a negative cell here. The minimum value of age is negative. Well, that can't be right. So we've got an error there. So very quickly, you can spot that there's a problem with this data. Uh, the minimum entry in BMI is a zero. Again, we can't have a zero for BMI. So I know that there's, there's an error somewhere in this data set, in, in this variable. Uh, there are some zeros, uh, a negative value, and, and so on. And I've, I've programmed in here uh, a flag to tell me whenever there is something here that's not quite right. So the first thing I would do in here is I would look at my flag and say, oh, I have a problem here. What, what is the problem? I've got empty cells. Where are my empty cells? I've got one in gender. I've got two in height. I've got one in weight. I might need to do some work there. So just by looking at some descriptive statistics, setting up a descriptive statistics sheet for each sheet that I've got for my raw data sheet, for my in progress, for my clean data, and for my data for analysis, you can see, you can get a chronological flow of how you've cleaned your data just by looking at your descriptive statistics without looking at your data. So this is really important. It, it gives you sort of a, a checklist of the things that you need to do. Uh, and, and this is really important. Uh, and I, I, to be honest, um, outside of, of, of my, my, my procedure, my, my method, my data cleaning method, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this. Uh, but it's it's something that I, I set up for every data set that I, that I clean in, in Excel. It's, it's one of the first things that I set up so that I can understand my data 
without actually looking at my data. I, I know exactly what problems I've got to clean up without even looking. Okay, and finally, the last, the last couple of things is that when we have our data in a data sheet, we do not clean our data in that data sheet because if you do an operation, uh, you've got to be sure that it's going to work correctly just in the data that you've collect, that you've selected or across the whole worksheet. You can introduce lots of errors. So we don't do work, we don't clean our data in the data set, in the, within the data sheet. If we're gonna cut, um, do some data cleaning on a particular column, we make a copy of that column in a spare sheet. I made a spare sheet over here. Okay, so we copy some data into a spare sheet. We do our data cleaning in there. Once we're happy with it, we can then copy it back into uh, the sheet that we're working with to make sure that we can minimize the possibility of new errors in uh, of introducing new errors into our data set. So I've got a couple of spare sheets here uh, that uh, ju just to show you that we've got that we can we can work with with these sheets. Okay, so I hope you've got uh, an understanding now more of an understanding about um, about how to work with data. Um, so working with, with data, it's not just a matter of having data in a worksheet and then just, just cleaning it. We're, we're a lot smarter than that. We can do a lot better than that. We can, uh, we can copy that worksheet and do some work with it. Copy it again, do some more work with it and do it in stages. So you have a chronological flow to all of your data cleaning processes so that um, if you make a mistake, it's not a disaster. You will never have to scrap your data set and start again. You've always got a copy. You've, you can always back up to a previous, a previous sheet. And in fact, if you, data, if you clean your data in, a, a sep, in separate sheets, you should never have to uh, disaster-proof your data in any case. But we do this. This is what we do. Uh, and it's, it's very effective. And you can, you can see by chronologically dating your um, your data cleaning processes in this way, you suddenly make your 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 processes much much easier. Everything becomes easy to work with, uh, and um, you're not in the dark anymore about oh, what errors have I got? Where are my errors? How can I spot them? And you, it's, it's these are the first steps that we take in um, completely automating our data cleaning processes. Okay, so I'm going to go back to. Uh, where am I going? I'm going to go to my PowerPoint, I think. Yeah, here we are. Okay. Okay, Brian Caflo. I, I think that, should that say Caflo? I know Brian. Or Brain Caflo. Oh, no, Brain, Cla brain Caflo. Oh, all right, okay. At Hopkins, that's it. Right, okay. I, I take it you're, I take it you're back then now. Okay. Right, so um, we're going to move on. Again, any questions, put them in there. I'll answer your questions as we go along. Okay, so um, what, I'm, what I've been, what I'm building up to in this whole series is, is basically to try to get you to understand that there are, um, that there are, are automated means to, uh, to cleaning your data. And these automated means can slash uh, days and weeks of your data cleaning processes, and um, it's it's something that I, I I've done for a lot of years. I, uh, I I built it over several years. I taught it to hundreds of researchers, uh, and uh, then when I left academia and I set up my own company, I I now want to teach it to others. And and I set up the Data Science University to to be able to teach about data science stuff. Um, so I, Data Science University is is where we teach. Um, online video courses uh, and we're dedicated to teaching data science to beginners so um, I, I'm, I'm not going to be doing um, a, a lot of stuff uh, great in-depth stuff about uh, about machine learning and things like that I we teach data science to beginners those that's just getting started and want to get th the basis you know the the cake that sits under the icing uh, so that, that's what we do and the first course is is open now. It's it's data cleaning in Excel for analysts and researchers. And um, 
the the lessons that I've that I gave last week and the lessons that I've just I've just given now that they, they are actually part of the uh, this this data cleaning course. So you've you've just had uh, some of some of this some of the content from the course for free and the uh, the course itself also has some free content within it. So you can you can check it out. And there's a there's a, a natural order. To, um, to all the things that we've been doing. So last week I talked about uh, the different data sheets, uh, sorry, working with a single data sheet. And this week um, I've been talking about all, all the different work, different data sheets and getting a chronological flow to your to your data. Uh, and in, we go through that in the course and we go through it in much, much more depth. Uh, and we teach all about the, the functions and the formulas in Excel and how to completely automate your data cleaning processes to get you down from that two weeks down to two hours. Uh, and so in the in this course, you'll learn about data collection because data collection, if you collect data in a, in a, a poor fashion, uh, you're gonna introduce lots of errors and you're gonna cause yourself lots of problems later. So there's a way to clean, sorry, there's a way to collect your data uh, so that you minimize errors in your data. So you've got a, a, sm a much smaller data cleaning problem. So data collection is actually uh, one of the really important parts of data cleaning. So after that, we go into data cleaning about all the different processes, completely automating the entire thing. Coding and, code and classifying your data so that you can, uh, you can understand all your data. You can transform your data between uh, different formats so that you can use it, use your data in any statistics program. You might have some text data that your statistics program says, no, I can't use text data. You've got to transform it into, into uh, integers. Okay, that's not a problem. We know how to transform data from text categories into integer categories and we can do it in a matter of a few seconds. Uh, completely automated, uh, same the other way around. If you've got integers and you want to transform them into text for whatever reason, we can do it, it's not a problem. So I'm, I will teach you in this course how to code your data, how to classify your data, how to make transformations of, of your data into different formats so it's just right for your statistics program so that you can do your analyses. We'll also learn about data integrity. Remember, uh, real life has rules. Your data has got to have rules as well. So, uh, for example, um, if you've got some continuous data, there might be outliers. What do you want to do with those outliers? Well, first, you've got to, you've got to uh, detect them. You've got to find them. And you've got to have a look at, well, is it, is it just outside the, uh, the, the expected range or is it a lot outside the range? What are we going to do with these data? So, let, well, let's, let's find out. First, your data has got to, it's got to conform to real life rules. So, uh, age data must be between 0 and about 100-ish, 110, 120. If it's outside those boundaries, it's probably not correct. It doesn't fit real life rules. Uh, and also, you've got the problem of outliers and what to do with them. You've got to detect them, and I've got a very, very quick way of detecting outliers in a matter of seconds, again. Uh, you, you can identify all your outliers, and then you can deal with them. Working smarter, not harder. That's, um, that's all about completely automating your data and using um, my data cleaning program called Data Cleaner. Now, I'm not going to talk about that, really, um, today. Uh, but once you transition away from Excel, you're looking to, to use some more sophisticated, automated data cleaning program. I left academia to build just such a program, and I, it's called Data Cleaner, and it's, it's available now for you to use. Uh, you can also use it for free. There is a free version. Uh, I will also give you a course bonus uh, as part of the course. Just, just for taking this course, I will give you a course bonus. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is at the moment. The curriculum is uh, is live now. The course is live now, and there is free content available, so you can go and check it out. Okay, so what you will learn in in this course, in data cleaning in Excel, is I will teach you my entire data cleaning method. Um, as I said, it, it used to take me two weeks to to clean. Uh, a data set and get it ready for analysis um, and I, I knock that down from two weeks to two hours uh, and it doesn't matter how big the data set is I will have it done in two hours because it really is very very quick um, and actually 
uh, th there aren't many steps, but you've got to know exactly what to do and in what order to do it in. You've got to have a procedure and a process. Uh, I've given you the first steps in that and uh, there are uh, additional steps beyond that. I will teach you everything that you need to know. I will teach you how to be organized with your data. Again, I've, I've just gone through some of that now. Um, and I will teach you all the Excel functions and formulae that you will need to clean your data. Everyone, I will not give you, I don't, I don't give you extra lessons just to pad it out. I'll give you exactly what you need. No more and no less. Uh, so I'll give you every function and every formula that you will need. I'll teach them in video courses and you'll get everything that you need. Uh, and you'll get, I'll show you the precise order in which to clean your data. I'll, I will teach you the types of data you'll encounter and how to clean them. And I'll show you how to use descriptive statistics to understand your data. And of course, we've, we've just been through some of that just right now, but we'll go into much, much greater depth in it. Uh, and I'll show you all the, all the formulae that you need and how to build um, a descriptive statistics sheet and how to read it, how to understand it without even bothering to look at your data. So everything is done in videos. So every lesson has a video. Uh, every lesson also has all the lecture notes. So um, you, it reminds you of everything that you that you need to remember. Uh, so uh, if you watch the video and then you want a reminder a few days later, oh, what was that he said again? You don't necessarily have to go through the video again. You've got all the lecture notes. And I will give you all the Excel code that you will ever need. Uh, as well as that, uh, for every lesson, there is there are Excel workbooks will, that I will give you with real examples uh, using the, the, the actual code. So you've got everything. And as a bonus for taking the course, uh, I will give you a 12 month license for Data Cleaner completely free. And I will give you 300 Data Cleaner credits to get you started completely for free. Uh, and together these are worth uh, over $2,000. So it's uh, taking the course is, is actually quite a, quite a, it's, I think the, I think the course is, is good value on its own but when you when you throw in uh, the, the the license to data cleaner and the credits um, I, I think it's quite a, quite a good good value course and you will learn how to fast track your data analyses to save yourself loads of time uh, make yourself happy and make your boss happy too and I'll give you a guarantee if you're not completely satisfied with the course Come and tell me why you're not happy and what you feel is missing. If I can't fix it and make you happy within 30 days, I will refund your money in full and you'll still keep access to the entire course. And the course is available now, right now, at an early bird price of $197. And this will end uh, tomorrow, Wednesday the 17th of May at 9pm, British summer time that's 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, and uh, on the page that you're on right now right underneath the video screen right down here uh, there are two links there's a there's a link to enroll now so you can purchase the course right right from here from where you are right now and underneath that there's a button to say well if you're not quite ready yet you want some more information you can click through and go to a landing page which tells you uh, gives you a lot more detail about the course it gives you the the whole detailed curriculum it shows you everything that you get for every lesson and the, <coughs> so and everything is everything is there on that landing page so that you can you can check it out and make make a decision there are five modules in the course uh, and there's over eight hours of video lessons. They're exclusive lessons, you won't get them anywhere else, you can only get them in this course. And uh, when you purchase this course you will get permanent access to all the course material. If I ever update the course, you will get all the updates as well, completely for free. There will be no additional payment at all, ever. Okay, so, uh, I want to say thank you very much uh, for to all those uh, people that have that have bought the course, uh, some have bought the course all, already. We actually uh, ran this course uh, a few months ago, and it was hugely successful. It it sold out, um, and most of the seats were actually sold at the early bird price. So if you if you if you want to take this course, you you really need to get in pretty quickly. I, I suspect it will it will fill up. 
every bit as quickly as it did last time. Uh, so uh, I would I would suggest that you get it at this early bird price before it runs out. Uh, and if there are any questions, I will I will address these these questions. You can pop them into the into the chat screen, and I'll I'll ask you right. As someone with a GIS background, thank you, John. I'll ask, I'll go through this. I was schooled in Nick Christmas's level of measurement. How do you decide what's the appropriate level of measurement? Uh, the data set itself seems obvious, or are there other things you look for? This is something I struggle with from time to time. Uh, appropriate level of measurement. I take it with that that, you, that you're that you talking about how many uh, decimal places or um, significant figures that you're talking about. It, it is it is a difficult one. It, it, it's not really a data question. It's uh, This is a scientific question. Uh, and it, you, you've, got to, you've got to say, well, um, how... How accurately is something measured to? So if you have, um, I'm just looking around here to see, uh, I, I don't have a ruler uh, handy with me, but um, I, I was going to give the example of, of having a ruler and saying, um, how accurately can you, can you make marks with a, a pencil on a ruler? Can you make them, you, you can be more accurate than a millimetre. You can be more accurate than half a millimetre. But when you try to, to score every third of a millimetre, then you, it's starting to get, uh, you, you'll start to get errors and bias. Um, because if you try and do it, score it every quarter of a millimetre, the, the lines are starting to, to, to run into each other. How accurately can you score that off? So... Uh, if you're going to measure uh, the scoring of a line with a pen or a pencil, um, if you're measuring in millimetres, um, you've got to think about whether one decimal place or two decimal places is as far as you can go. If you think you can measure it to three decimal places, okay, can you measure that to six decimal places? Well, it's probably not going to be meaningful if you're looking at six decimal places for that. So, of course, what you do is you, you measure it, you decide how, how accurate it is appropriate to measure it to. And then you, uh, you, you measure it to that number of decimal places. Um, you, can, you, can, you can try and go one further decimal place if you like. Uh, because it, it will round to that to that, but there's no point going uh, beyond that number of decimal places. I presume that's what you're talking about with uh, level of measurement, John. Um, the data itself seems obvious, uh, or are there other things you look at? For this, I struggle with from time to time. Yeah, it's um, yeah. As as I said, the uh, measuring um, it's it, it's all about the, the the science rather than the data. The data has just got to capture the the level of complexity. Um, of what it is that you're trying to measure and that's a scientific question rather than a data question of course then once you've got your data into excel you've got tools within excel to do your rounding for you so then you can you can round it to the uh, an appropriate uh, number of decimal places okay just uh, uh, finally just before we close um, the uh, the early bird price price for this um, for this course is one hundred ninety seven dollars and it will expire at nine p.m. British summer time. That's four p.m. Eastern daylight time uh, on Wednesday seventeenth of May. That's tomorrow. So there's uh, uh, well, it's it's exactly one one day twenty four hours from now. It's now two minutes past nine. Uh, British summer time on Tuesday so you've got exactly 24 hours to get in here for the early bird price and after the early bird price um, it will go up to 297 so you've got uh, 24 hours to save yourself $100 now there will not be a replay of this webinar uh, especially since uh, I had to stop halfway through but we were not planning a, a replay of, of this webinar anyway so um, I won't be sending out a, 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 a replay email and you won't get a second chance uh, to look at this uh, at this webinar so I hope you've taken good notes for this so thank you very much for joining me I've uh,